Today, as James has pointed out, if we're looking at making those links between what we've done last term in chemistry and what we've been doing recently with rocks. What we're going to do to start off with is a bit of a diagram on the board. There's also a diagram or a Venn diagram, if we're being specific, in front of you. So let's turn those over on your tables and have a look at what they are. Oh my god, they're blank. And before we have a look at what we're doing for the day in terms of a learning goal, we're going to talk you through what we're actually learning. So to start off with, there's a bit of an activity that you'll start with looking at some different keywords and what they mean, so vocabulary building stuff. From there, as you can see, there's a bit of a prac set up that we'll run as a demonstration. And then our third activity of the day is where we built and made those crystals last week. We're going to have a look at what they look like, um, some of them with our own eyes, some with the stereo microscopes that you'll see around the room. Uh, and in those little soft bags next to the microscope, we have the clip-on microscopes for your smartphone or whatever device that you're using. Um, so we can use them to see things that kind of sit in the middle between what we would normally see with our eyes and what the stereo microscope will pick up as well. So that's what we're doing for the lesson. In our learning goal, there's two key cognitive verbs there. One is analyze and one is identify. In your groups, we're going to start off with have a chat based on what we're doing for this lesson. Which verb fits that learning goal more accurately? Are we analyzing also today or are we just identifying? 30 seconds in your groups, let's go. Really we're more right now. Oh, I think we're like crystals. Mm, yeah. And I don't know. I think it's analyzed. I think it's James, which one? No, I'm... If you were to pick one? I don't know. I mean, they're saying analyze. Why are you saying analyze? Um, well, I don't know. I feel like we're already kind of like reading it. Crystals and mm -hmm. like we're not so much saying what like everything is, so we're looking further into it. Yeah, and we said identify too was about picking an answer, yeah. so to speak. It's it's pretty clear. Analyzing, we're not really sure at the start. We're weighing up, we're so looking we at a bunch of information. Like. Almost, yeah. You could say it like that. And remember when we looked up the definition of analyte, identify was in it? Yeah. You weigh up all the information to then make a decision at the end? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Hands up for analyze. Hands up for identify. Okay. Why did you think identify? Because we're not really like... Nice and loud for us. We're not really like going into depth about it, okay. I guess. So it's superficial, perhaps, is that what you're saying? Okay. What about someone who thought analysis? Why are we analysing today? Adam? Because uh, we already know um, the process. Of, well, we've already created crystals. Now we've got to look at them and, I guess, analyse what um, they keep us. So figure something out. Probably the, the key thing that Naira and I talked about just then is we spoke last week about when we looked at analysis, you end up identifying anyway. You're looking at all the parts of something, weighing them up, and then identifying. So if you said identify this morning, it's not an incorrect answer, but to get to that identifying step, we're definitely analyzing first. So we'll get rid of this one. We'll shift that one in. So to start off today, I'm going to give you a template. As I come around and hand these out, I'm asking you to stand up and tuck your chairs in. So standing up, tucking your chairs in. Now this particular activity is called a silent card shuffle. Emphasis on the silent. Now the key part of this activity is not about getting the right answer. In a very similar way that we just looked at analysing the learning goal, it's about your justification and your thinking and your reasoning. So don't stress too much about getting these cards that you're about to receive in the right spot. It's about why you put that card in that spot. So you've got a template in front of you. 
Shortly you'll receive a bunch of cards that generally fit the template. Obviously some definitions are a bit longer than others, so it won't perfectly fit the bottom <coughs> ones. Without talking, hence the silent in the silent card shuffle, your group needs to place these cards facing up onto that template. The key thing is, once you have put a card in a certain slot, it's stuck there. You can't move it. You'll also be under some time pressure, which tends to make us make decisions a little bit faster. You cannot communicate in any way. So no hand gestures, no like, why did you do that? Once you have placed the card, it's stuck there without talking. Questions before we get started? Okay. Matt, you give me a hand handing these out face down. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Have you got one there? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Can I give you four minutes to complete this activity? While I set up the clock, you may now, without talking, Unclip and face your cards upright. If we finish before the four minutes, uh, then we'll just end the activity and start to go through. Your four minutes without talking starts now. It's nice to see a few of you that have finished, even though you can't communicate, are kind of analysing and looking through, going, oh, I'm not really happy with that decision. I think we need to change that. We are down to a minute and a half. We are all done. So, without talking yet, what we're going to do, I think we're all right for numbers. Two of you from each group are going to move around to the group in this direction. So because we've got this table kind of in the middle here, Luca, if you can have a look at two of you to move to that back table, and then everyone else is going to move around. Two students from each table moving to the group around. Let's go. Now that you have moved, have a discussion with the person that has stayed or people that have stayed from their group. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Why or why not? We did it. 
Yeah, you put minerals. Yeah, it says the rock is made up of minerals, but we put minerals in front of it. We put minerals in front of Yeah, in front of it. And it says that rocks are made up of minerals. So, Ben, are you talking about these bits, the description, or the actual verb itself? Or word itself? Description. Okay. Hands up if you found you agreed with what the group before you, especially if you've moved, have done. Hands up if you disagree. Sort of what sort of mean? In terms of order at the top or the descriptions that match with those things? Okay. So as if we go back to our Venn diagram that's underneath, linking in very strongly with our learning goal, today we're mainly looking at this middle bit here. And if we look at the work we've done this term and last term, we know a lot about rocks and we know a lot about chemistry, but we're looking at that link. The reason, as we've spoken about, that we're looking at that link is your brain getting a good deal. Adam, what do I mean when I said your brain getting a good deal? Not sure. Who would like to volunteer? When I say your brain gets a good deal, what do it's I mean? best of both worlds, it's two on one. Two on one. Your brain has to remember one thing and what links to it as opposed to different isolated facts much more likely to stay in your brain and obviously be useful when you do need that information. What is the smallest building block that we have? An atom. An atom, right? Now we need to be careful with this particular activity because you could have started with an atom and built your way up or you could have started with, uh, what's the far end of the scale there? A rock. You could have started with a rock and built your way down. So it's the same thing, just obviously in a flipped order. So having a look, I'll zoom in a little bit. I started when I made this with a rock and worked my way down. You may have started with an atom and worked your way up. So a rock is a solid substance made up of minerals. And hopefully you can kind of see the chemistry that we did last term on the right and the rock stuff that we did on the left. And we've kind of got that crystal type area as what sits in the middle. And if we have a look <coughs> at what we've done with actual rocks, where we look at, what's this rock? Marble. Marble. Close. Granite. It is granite. So you can clearly see crystals in that. And then obviously, oh, I'll actually pick some of these ones. With what we did last week, there are clearly some crystals with our copper sulfate stuff as well. So a very clear link there. If we move our way through having a look today at minerals, so a naturally occurring chemical substance that has been, sorry, not been made by an organism. So this isn't something that's passed away, animal or plant. This is something that's what we call inorganic, not been made by something li living, and it's arranged in what we call a crystal lattice. So that may sound confusing. In other words, it forms crystals. A crystal, therefore, because it's hard to talk about what a crystal lattice is without talking about what a crystal is, are compounds that are arranged in a highly ordered structure. So later on in the lesson today, when we use the microscopes, you will see very clear shapes. For example, these clear crystals that we made with the alum, you will see a lot of hexagons which is a very good link between what we've done with rocks and chemistry because you can physically see the shape of a crystal linking into how the atoms are arranged, as we'll show you in a second as well. If we keep going down or up, depending which way you've arranged it, we've got a compound. A compound, how many types of atoms in there, Matt? Compound? Yep, two. Two or more. <coughs> so multiple of different types, in other words. An element, Jaina, how many in an element? One, just one thing? Yep. Or one type? Yep. So one type could be one, could be many, and then obviously we end up down at an atom as our smallest building block of one thing. What we're going to do now, I'm going to give you a few minutes 
don't worry too much with your Venn diagram about the rocks and the chemistry side of things. But having a look in the middle, what would you add to this overlap between rocks and chemistry based on this activity? You may uh, grab a seat too. The same place. Back to your original group, sorry. Should we switch them around and stuff? Hmm? Should we switch them around and stuff? Oh. No. It's fine. I think. Just these two. Yeah, and then arrange them in the correct order. Yeah, put them this way. Um. Just on that activity with those definitions, what goes in the middle of there? This is your diagram. So what goes in the middle? So from this activity where we've looked at how atoms and chemistry essentially relates to rocks, Yeah. what is the overlap? What things relate to both topics that we've looked at? Crystal lattices, compounds. Okay. Yeah, well let's get that down. Let's go 10. So you kind of look across the top at the moment, the yeah. things are kind of sit in the middle, is that right? Yeah. What about this, I guess, oh, definition for descriptions here? Does any of that stuff? Two a, just looking at it hurts. Where are you at, two Yeah. Uh, Actually, this, I don't get what he's asking. So in terms of the words at the top, the key concepts, which ones are those? Do you think they're both? Yeah. Oh, cool. I guess you could say it all kind of overlaps to an extent, right? But rocks are made of atoms, but what is it? It's just what we're saying. I'm just going to leave my mic my dog is waking me up. Um. So if you were to reorder this so it matched the order you had on the on the board, for example, so it was more yeah more like that, and you were to try and split that up, you would have essentially your atom and your phone to the spectrum are they? They're very different. Okay, final minutes. So you have that overlap, but you've still got your chemistry and your geology. Yeah. And you've got these four in the middle that will always sort of overlap and inter interconnect. So try and look at how you would separate those four over rocks, chemistry, and Okay. Two crystals, rock, right? <laughs> Should we add... Um, Thirty seconds. Ten seconds.
Okay, finishing up. So this is the same process that we will continue to do through the lesson today. We'll do a little bit of an activity. We'll analyze the information that we can take out of that activity. And then we're going to add to our own diagram. So if you still think, oh, I'm not too happy with that, there's a little bit more for me to complete there. Uh, don't stress too much. We will definitely come back and you'll have a bit more time very shortly. Before we move on to, obviously, I've had a bit of an outfit change very recently. Just to show you what some crystals actually look like. So on the right of these diagrams is what you actually see. And then on the left is how the atoms or the compounds or the lattices, depending on which lens you want to view through, are arranged. So we've got salt crystals at the top there. You'll see from an atomic point of view it's nice and square. And you see the crystals that you actually see are nice and square. If we look at graphite, so the stuff that your lead pencils are made of, you'll see that there are... I guess some kind of sheets that you can easily see through that graphite. And if we have a look at how the atoms are arranged, you can see it's nice and tight. There's very strong bonds sideways, but not really strong bonds across those layers. So the layers you see on the left, you can also see on the right. If we have a look at diamond, which is obviously a very strong uh, compound or whatever you're, I guess, considering it through, it's really, really strong. You can see that there are very strong bonds between those atoms everywhere here. And obviously when we actually touch a diamond or look at a diamond in real life, so to speak, it's quite tough as well. Uh, down the bottom, you should have a POE table in your class notes, Matt. So down the bottom of your class notes you should have a predict, observe, explain table. Uh, for most of you it will be the very bottom. If you've added your own stuff more recently, then it might be just very close to the bottom. So again, we're looking at chemistry and rocks and how they come together when we look at this particular demonstration. So very shortly, um, we're going to get you around in a semicircle around the front here. The clear liquid that you can see in those test tubes there is something we call silver nitrate. So it does have silver in that solution. We do need to be careful. And I guess the exact same similar way where we have looked at copper sulfate Silver nitrate and copper sulfate have the exact same risks. So if it does get on your skin, it may irritate your skin. Hands up, what would we do if it did get on our skin? Thank you. Yep, so if it got all over you, yeah, you might go in the shower. Um, probably a little bit of overkill for what we're doing today. We'd probably just go to a tap and rinse and obviously let me know as well. Um, what's the other big thing we might... Uh, what diagram went with the copper sulfate? Had a funny little picture in it. The fish. What did the fish thing mean? It's dangerous to aquatic life. So we need to be very careful. 
that we don't dispose of it down the sink or something like that because aquatic life really don't deal well with the stuff and it's obviously going to kill them and harm the environment. So for that reason today, um, we're using a little bit stronger stuff than we would normally um, give out to student groups. So that's why we're doing a demonstration. What we're going to do initially, just to show you what can happen, is in those two test tubes, I have had some of this silver nitrate sitting in a fridge upstairs overnight, so it's nice and cold. And I've just put some, the one on the right for your case, in some warm water. I didn't mix it, I just had it in the, a beaker in the warm water, so it's a little bit warmer than the stuff that's been in the fridge. <coughs> I'm then going to grab some zinc, which I have put into these little coils here and I'm simply going to drop them into those two test tubes. You need to predict, given the work that we have done recently on both rocks and chemistry, first of all, is it going to be a chemical reaction and if so, what would you likely see? So what are the signs of a chemical reaction occurring? And from a rock point of view, what do you think the difference would be between the cold one and the warm one? I'm going to give you two minutes to write those predictions on your OneNote. If your OneNote's not working today or it hasn't synced properly, feel free to do this in your book. We can do it as a computer if that's easier. So, what are we predicting? That What's there will be a chemical reaction in both the warm reaction. and cold. <laughs> What was it? Um, in both the cold and silver nitrate. I'm thinking In both the cold and hot, warm, um, silver. He's dropping the metal things in there and expecting a chemical reaction, right? The, the warm and cold silver nitrate. Wait, I still don't understand what he's doing. Is he just putting those things in? He's putting he's like, them in. Yeah. What will it? Which means a new what will happen? Just putting stuff in the hot. I have a film that in the warm house. But I think the hot will warm. Sorry. Yeah. So the warm will have more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the particles will really move around faster. Yeah. However. Um, what about the rate? Yeah. That's yeah. What okay. Awesome. Uh, However, the warm up solution in the. Will, will have a um, reaction. What was it? What's he putting in? Silver, so uh, the copper. Did you say zinc? Oh, yeah. Zinc into it? Yeah. Is that what the metal is? Yeah. Placed in the warm silver nitrate. What you haven't said anything about yet is about the cold. Uh, the, well, placed in the warm and cold. Nitrate. Is it like the rate? Like what happens with the cold one? What happens with the hot one? Actually, not the rate. Right. Should be rate or speed. The rate or speed. The what do you think will happen? Speed of the chemical. Rebecca, what did you write? Will. Um, I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Wait, I have another answer. Oh. How long is it? Is it just a sentence? The prediction? Two sentences. Oh. The other G2 temperature. completed your prediction. Um, being mindful of what's around the room this morning, I'm going to make a semicircle around this front part around these test tubes. So feel free to move when you feel like you've completed your prediction. Uh, if you don't have a great view this morning, that's okay. As you can see, it's up on the screen there as well. So when you've done your prediction, let's move up the front and make a nice semicircle. Yeah. 
you don't have your laptop or your book with you so now we're thinking we've done the prediction we're looking at observation now a lot of you in your predictions talked about signs of a chemical reaction such as gases James can you just grab a seat on the floor or stand down for us thank you um, looking at signs of a chemical reaction so a lot of you said things like gases maybe even a color change temperature change which we haven't got a thermometer there this morning so that might be a little bit harder to measure and then a lot of you spoke about the rate of reaction as well based on the colour difference. So that was, I guess, as a general overview what I saw when I walked around. If we have a look at these ones here, so we've got, I'll just feel them. We've got the cold one on the left, the warm one on the right. I'm going to try and drop them at the same time. Again, if you can't see on the, um, the desk, I will look up on the screen there. be thinking back to now what did I predict is what I predicted was actually occurring. Yeah, so a few suggestions of it's corroding, it's being eaten away, a few suggestions of oxidization. Did it shrink or did it just sag? It's weird. Was it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Wait, was it black to start with? No, it was change color. Oh, okay. So if you're wondering what it looks like beforehand, oh, okay. these coils are what they, I guess, before they reacted, obviously, and there does not look the same as what this looks like. Definitely does not look the smooth. Yeah. Yeah. I might see if we can move it around again. Yeah, that's how it is. Now, which side? Which side was the cold one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what the yeah. Yeah. The left side. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh. So as well as looking at signs of a reaction, Whoa. you should also be looking at the difference between the two. The one on the left is shorter. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So that will continue to do its thing for the next few minutes. What we're going to do to save a bit of time is now you need to return to your desk and fill out your observations. Every now and again, glance back up at the camera and see what's happening on the head. The colder one, the colder one, the warmer one, yeah. Cause the colder one was the warmer one. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. one's the colder one? The colder one's. The colder one, the reaction has a lot The right is 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 the right is
Now, whilst you are typing your observations and even your explanation, if you think you have an idea of what happened and why, you'll see now up on the screen we've got a top-down view from the roof camera. It's the exact same stuff in there, so it's silver nitrate, but this time I'm going to put some copper coils in it. Now, the copper ones are a little bit clearer and easy to see, but it is also a much slower reaction, so that's why I'm starting it now while you are working. And I've also used a little bit stronger silver nitrate, so the reaction happens faster as well. So is it same warm and cold? Yep, still warm and cold. Which one's warm and which one's cold? This one is your cold one. Okay. This one? So one on one. Copper always what just happened? Now I filmed this the other day and it took about 25 minutes. So don't feel like you need to watch it like it's a fireworks show. Just clean up every now and again to change. Yeah. You can see this one is a much prettier reaction. The hot one's gone first. So, oh, what was your observation? Um, I said when the zinc came to the solution, it immediately changed colour when I saw the type of glass, and then I went on to describe um, the yellow. Beard. Now, what you'll be interested in, Adam, is the top of this. It's sparkle. Um, this particular copper came with a coating over it, so I sanded it back to get the coating off. So you will see some bits. I said that I observed that when the zinc was placed in the silver nitrate, both warm and cold, that the zinc started to corrode and turned into a black slash green color. However, the cold yeah. silver nitrate reacted faster with the zinc than the warm silver nitrate. Well, it's going to be green and bluish because copper and. Yeah. yeah, I said, uh, so once so, uh, the zinc was placed in the silver nitrate, and warm and cold, uh, the zinc coil started to corrode into a green to black colour. Yeah, if you think you can explain it, Luca, jump straight in. So remember you've got two lenses or two hats, so to speak, that you're wearing. What was the difference between the cold and the hot one? And then what chemical sign of the chemical reaction did you see as well? Oh, what sign of the chemical reaction? The fact that he said it's a prettier reaction indicates that it's crystals. Yeah. So remember that one's a cold one there. Yeah. Crystals form faster. Hands up if you're still going on your observations. That's the most you'll be looking at explanations now then too. With your explanation, obviously the chemistry is of a pretty high level, so make sure you don't focus too much on explaining the chemistry behind it. But definitely have a look at well, why did the cold one do this, which is really clear up on the screen there, the difference between the cold and the warm. Is the warm. And then think how does that relate back to what we've been looking at? So this is the cold one. Is the warm room temperature? Or uh, the... What I did, Matt, is I grabbed some hot water from the tap, okay. which I'll let you hold. It's not overly hot. I didn't want to heat it up too much. Yet. The warm Just around warm. one more minute on your explanation. Because you need heat. You need heat. It's not that hot though. It's, it's like warm water from a tap. Why does this more easy because it's warm faster than it is? Huh? Get a textbook. I don't know what page. How am I supposed to know what page everything is? Uh, Pearson places.
Juan Oramax. Now, I've frozen the image on the screen just to make it really easy for us to observe so it doesn't continue to change as we watch. What do you notice, first of all, in comparing the cold, which is on the left, to the hot, which is on the right? Hands up. In the hot, there's more abundance of crystals. So there's more crystals, first of all, on the right? Yep. What else do you notice when you compare cold to hot? Which ones are smaller? Um, the one on the right. Okay. So Adam's saying he thinks the one on the right seem a bit finer. It's a little bit hard to see from that far away though. Mm -hmm. If you have a look at where the camera is versus where the actual mini beakers are down there, that's a fair way away, right? We're zooming in a lot. So what we're going to do now, just to give you one more little bit of information, is I did this bracket looking from the side the other day and I put it on a hyperlapse on my phone. So what you're about to see is about 25 minutes in about a minute and a half. Now this is linked on OneNote to OneDrive, so if you want to have a look at what this looks like yourself in your own time, feel free. So we've got warm on the left, cold on the right as the arrows show. See a little bit of condensation on the right there, which inhibits your viewing. Much more abundance, Jesus. And what you should start to see too, if you have a look, well, I guess on the beakers on the table there versus what's on screen, you're seeing a very similar thing. So if we go back to observations, not only as Matt has said, do we get more crystals when it's warmer or hotter, but they are also, what did you say over here? Thicker, or in other words, bigger crystals too, right? What other signs of a chemical reaction did you see in this copper one here? Yep. Changing colour. Sometimes people miss that because they're so engrossed in what, how there's crystals growing that they miss the gradual change in colour. Adam, what were you talking to me about in terms of colour with copper? So you predicted that, right? Did it turn that colour? The liquid's already turned that colour. Yeah, and in our experiment here today, it's turned blue as well. Where have you seen that blue colour before? No. Yeah. Where else? Yeah, the special blue <coughs> was originally yeah. orange. The experiment. The experiment. The experiment. So Matt said, hey, I've seen that, it looks familiar. Yeah. That experiment is actually making the stuff that you made your crystals out of. So what's happening, if we look at an explanation from a chemistry point of view, is the silver is doing a switcheroo or a swap with whatever metal that we've put in here. So for the zinc one, the silver is going onto where the zinc was and the zinc's going into the solution. And on the copper one, the copper is coming out of the solid copper into the solution making copper sulfate which is blue like you see over here with the crystals and the silver again is coming out so what we're actually growing in both of these are silver crystals let's just stop and film it we're growing silver crystals so what we could then do is refine that silver and make jewelry and those kind of things out of it too so that's our chemistry explanation and we've also then looked at from a crystal side of things that crystals that form in cold conditions don't grow as many crystals, but more importantly for us and what we've been looking at, they grow smaller crystals. Crystals that have more time to cool or grow in a hotter environment, not only do they grow more crystals, but they tend to be much larger, as you've seen there on the left. Do you want to watch it one more time? Yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is go back to one note. I put three versions of the same film in there just at different speeds. So this will link to OneDrive as you'll see. This one is really, really quick. So you should see the crystals grow. Especially have a look, 
It's just loading. Have a look at the bottom of the left one, the warm one. You'll see the crystals grow sideways as this video starts to play as well. And you'll notice the colour change is quite apparent because it's so sped up. Yeah. See down the bottom there? Yeah. It starts to bulk up. Yeah. So now, same as what we did before with our laminated cards activity, let's go back to our Venn diagrams, looking particularly at the middle, what information can you analyse from this activity links chemistry and rocks together to go in the middle of your Venn diagram? Didn't we already have crystals? So what main type of rocks are we talking about? Igneous. And what are the two types of igneous? So in terms of cold, so to speak, cold, yeah. which one out of those two is your cold rock? Extrusive. Extrusive. So it comes out yeah. of the volcano, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So it cools quickly or slowly? Faster. Faster. Yeah. So do the crystals get a long time to grow then or a short time? Sorry, short time. So what happens with the crystal size? Slow. Slow. Oh, okay. So we've just looked at basically growing crystals in chemistry versus growing crystals in a rock. Yeah. Same thing, same idea. Just easy. Just a little bit prettier and obviously you could probably sell those silver crystals for more than a silver rock. Crystals form. Crystals form as chemical. Wait, larger crystals form when as a result of more heat and larger crystals form as a result of more heat and a longer cook time. In larger crystals form in more heat. In higher temperature? Yeah, in higher temperatures. As the crystals are more time to grow? Yeah. To yeah. To say. Fan, you okay? Yep. Pass back. I don't know. Wait. Did I? Have you made that focus yet? Yeah? You, <laughs> you can just see blue. Yeah. That that's do you want me to have yes. a go for you? Yeah. That'd be nice. This one turned out. Oh my god. <laughs> 
What's the definition of boost? It looks good. Do you see a difference between the slow cooling and quick cooling there? Yeah, but you can see that one there, right? Yeah. So you're seeing a massive, should see similar shapes, but definitely a different size. Who's <laughs> age? So once you've had a look at your copper sulfate, switch them for the alum. Put the clear one on, have a look at the shape. You should see a difference in shape of the crystal as well. Have a look at that now. You'll need to adjust that back one a little bit to get it into focus, but it should be fairly right. Can you see the definitive crystals in there now? Yeah. You can, if you want to have a look at that, just adjust that back one just a little bit. It should be oh, fairly in focus. So you should see a different shape with these compared to the blue ones. Mm. You can't see any of the crystals. That's cool. For my original one. Okay. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Do we just keep looking? Yeah, we we'll switch So you can use that one now? Yeah. Take that off. Yeah. You leave it on there, it might stay near focus. So have another go at refocusing it, it should be fairly close now. So just use that back one up and down and see if you can get the crystals back to focus. So should be looking at your last set of crystals now before we bring it back into the centre of the room. No. <laughs> and the first thing I do is walk into the chair. I hate the chair. Switch back to your shirt. Wait, what was this one? Are you finished? Uh, I can't remember doing it. I remember that one. Uh, yeah. I don't remember doing this one. I remember doing that one. Remember I had to keep it over the heat net and just keep starting it? Yeah. And then you have to put like a little bit on the thing. Um, now do we just put it on the Look, look, look. Oh, no. Not yet. So you won't need... So see that one there? Yeah. If you look at the blue one, you would have seen something that looks similar. That looks like that. Yeah. Oh, that's because I essentially it. that's one giant crystal. In that blue petri dish, there's lots of very small ones of those. So as this cools slower, the crystal grew bigger. Yeah. Which was the same as having the warm water versus the cold. Okay, Ben, sit down yeah. now. Okay. Rachel, back to your seat. That's okay. We'll have another look next time. No, I'll leave it there once we go out. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Do I just? I don't Who would like a little bit more time looking at that, Chris? Yes. Oh, so what we'll do, we'll keep them next lesson, we'll make sure we're back in here and have a little bit more of a further look. But to wrap up today, we set out to analyse how chemical processes form different types of rock. And when we analyse something, as we said, identify is kind of hidden in an analysis. We need to look at all the information to identify something. What we can easily do with our Venn diagram then is have a look at what's in that middle part to identify the links that we make. Some of you have got quite a lot there, some of you not so much. <coughs> what I'm going to do is collect them, scan them, and I'll put them on one note. So as a class, we can see next lesson what we've done to identify those links. Because as we've spoken about, if we can make links between different concepts with the one idea, it really helps our brain focus on one thing and the connections rather than lots of different isolated facts. And when we go to use them, our brain can easily retrieve them rather than try and make links as we go. Any questions from today? Um, can we go now and get changed? You can.
Thank you, everyone.